Hey everyone, Michael Crump here. Today we're going to take a look at the We Mini and how that you can exploit it to do things such as turn off the health and safety warning screen, as well as load game backups via USB through a program called CIOS. So a lot of the instructions here are very similar to the standard Wii edition. So let's just jump straight into it. Okay, here I'm at Wii.God slash get started. Okay, so on the getting started, there's many different exploits to use, but for the Wii Mini, you have to use Blue Bomb, which is a Bluetooth vulnerability. You can check out the video up here if you'd like to learn how to do that. We won't be covering that as part of this video since I've previously covered it. Now it says if you're using a Wii, then you can proceed to do the homebrew channel and boot me. But if not, you can use the homebrew channel. So we covered this part as well and you can check out that video also right above. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the preloader. Preloader adds a level of brick protection to your Wii. It loads before the menu, it's the name. This tool can enable hack for your Wii and can be used to quickly launch the homebrew channel. Again, it says don't use this on the Wii. You can use this on the Wii and the Wii Mini. So I clicked on the installer here. Once I clicked on the installer, it says extract it to the apps folder on your SD card or USB drive. Press the plus button once you load this up through your homebrew in order to install it. Okay, so just to take things one step at a time, I have went ahead and I have extracted that and now I have preloader V091. And inside of this, you can see there is already this apps folder and it has preloader on that. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna copy that apps folder and then on my USB stick or wherever I would like to store this, uh, you can go ahead and hit in paste. So once you hit in paste, you should just have your USB drive letter and then another one that's called apps. How to enter preloader on a Wii Mini. So it says if you're using a Wii Mini, plug in a USB keyboard and hold escape on it while turning it on. Now keep in mind, your Wii only has one USB port. So in order to plug in the keyboard, it will take that USB port. Before we go any further, we're going to need to install CIOS for the Wii Mini. So CIOS is going to allow us to run a custom operating system that will do things like enable a USB drive. Go ahead and click on that installer first, and you're gonna see this one also goes into the apps folder, and it's given us a few instructions here in order to get that to work. Okay, back over to our hard disk. We're gonna go into our downloads folder. Let's just go ahead and let's extract this out. Now that that's completed, see we've got a D2X installer. Let's just copy that whole folder, and we're gonna put that into the apps here. So let's drop that in there. Okay, so in preloader, we have these four files. And if we go to D2X, you're gonna see something very similar to this. Okay, to give a bit of context here, um, what I have done is I have went and picked up a USB keyboard from another room in my house. And I have already loaded the Wii Mini, at least to the homebrew channel. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to plug in my USB stick that we were just working on just a moment ago that has those two apps in it. So let's take a look at that. And you'll notice here that once you plug it in, by default, it will go ahead and read this. So we're going to click on preloader first off. and We're going to click on load here. And here we go. There was that screen. So it says, you know, again, read this carefully. So press the plus button to install or update it. I just hit the plus button on my controller here. And you should see this. Um, one thing to note is, is that it should say install done. And it's fine if all of these other ones are left as not found. So press A once again to get back to the loader screen. 
And now here is where you're going to need to get that USB keyboard if you haven't already. So you have to get the USB keyboard and then you're going to need to hold escape on it while turning your Wii on. And what that's going to do is that's going to get you into the preloader menu where you can toggle some of these different features and functionality. Okay, so here I was walking back through where the camera is filming at and I've got a great USB keyboard and now I'm unplugging the USB stick that I currently had in there. And there you go, you can see it now. And I am plugging in the keyboard. Now it's okay that our apps are not showing anymore because it's already been saved into the internal storage. So now what you'll see is I'm gonna turn off the television and I'm gonna hold down the escape button. So there we go, A fancy keyboard here. Hold down the escape button and hit the power button and now turn it back on yet again and there you go okay so let's go down to the system menu hacks and from here there's a couple of different things that we're going to change so block disk update so if a disk has an update to a game uh, you can turn that off um, there's also block online updates so the Wii is more than likely not going to have any more updates. I just went ahead and turned that enabled. The most annoying of all of these is that health screen. Uh, turn that to enable for sure. That way you don't have to press A every time. And then obviously I want to do things like move the disk channel around. There's a few different patches here for the Wii Mini, 480p graphics fix in the system menu. Uh, I've just enabled pretty much all of these except for that very last one. Once you're done, click on Save Settings. And now, Preloader has been set up, and these features and functionality will be persistent upon each reboot. One other thing you may want to do is go into the Settings here, and on the Settings for Auto Boot, you may want to turn it to Boot directly into the Homebrew channel. Um, by doing so, you won't have to uh, go into the system menu and then go to the homebrew channel. So it allows you to quickly boot up exactly where you want to go. Uh, when it says return to, is we'll just go to the system menu. And I turned this on for stop disk on startup. That's where like the disk will be doing all the spinning and things of that nature. And then save settings. And now we're just going to go to the homebrew menu. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, is that... I had unplugged the USB keyboard and plugged back in my USB stick. Go ahead and where you see D2X CIOS installer, go ahead and click on the load button there. Give this a second to boot up. And if you see this screen so far, it should be looking all good on your system. Okay, let's get past the credits here. And so we need to change that first item to D2XLV1 Beta 2. And over here where it says select the CIOS base, press the right arrow. There you go. You can see the little arrows kind of like highlight. And so you can leave the last one as it is and then press the A button to install it. So it takes a little bit of time on the installing title part. Okay, press A to continue. And now back over in our desktop. So now we probably want to enable Ethernet. Again, we're on the Wii Mini and it does not have Ethernet. So we're going to go ahead and click on this app and we're going to download it. And once we do that, again, this is going to be unzipped to the apps folder. And this is going to allow us to use a USB to Ethernet dongle in order to get internet onto the Wii. Okay, so we'll click on USB loader. And again, one click and we're going to download and we're going to extract both of these. And we're going to grab the 
file called USB loader. And this is going to go into our apps folder on our thumb drive or your USB storage device. We'll do the same thing here for Wii Mini Ethernet Enable. Just going to copy that full folder out and put it in apps and we're going to paste it. Okay, perfect. So we have now the ability to add ethernet as well as to load games via our USB stick. Returning to the homebrew channel, I'm going to plug that new USB drive into the single port that the we mini has and now you'll see we've got two more options so we mini ethernet enable we're going to go to that one first and we're going to go load again it says here you only need to run this once so we went ahead it says enable internet and then okay um, i have had this have i have had trouble with this in the past um, not letting me exit out of it. So you may have that same sort of thing, but press like the A button afterwards. And again, you may have to reboot after enabling it if it doesn't exit out properly. Um, and then we're going to go up to the very top here and we're going to go to USB Loader GX. So we've installed the COS installer, which is going to allow us to read games from the USB drive. Okay, so we have USB loader installed and now it is built in the catalog of the games and here is just a couple of games uh, that I already have on my hard drive. And I think that just about does it for today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this content was helpful. If it was helpful, please hit that like button and as well as that subscribe button. It means a lot to me and it helps this content get discovered, which means I can create even more of it. Until next time, Michael Crump signing out. Bye-bye.